So I didn't even plan to record right now. I'm getting ready for this video. Can somebody explain to me why I have an apple? <laughs> like, what? Why is my transmog companion an apple? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> What is up guys, McDouble's back again with a brand new video, and today we're going to be doing some Mythic Plus, playing around with the Harbinger of Pestilence build, showing you guys a brand new spirit build that does pretty damn good DPS. So I hope you guys enjoy the video, let's jump right in. Okay, obviously somebody is trolling me, right? <laughs> what is going on? Why is everybody an apple? Why are only some people apples, and why is there no buff that says they are an apple? What is going on? Look at this guy, he's just a big apple. <laughs> running around man what are they doing this one's jumping this one's on a horse okay i need to calm down i'm sorry but it's just i don't i didn't expect what is that one on the spider i didn't expect this man and i really don't understand it but i hope it stays this way forever i wish i was an apple and i'm actually really pissed that I oh that's my goggles of virtue turns everything into fruits i meant to transmog them oh my god that's what it does oh Yes! Oh, man! That is the literal best! I'm just gonna wear these, man. I don't care. So we started off with a pretty good roll. I actually ended up getting the Unstable Affliction offered to me, which, if you guys don't know, is absolutely integral for peaking my DPS with the Harbinger of Pestilence build. We're gonna be transitioning to a Warlock-centric build, so this is what I need to make that work. Number two, I was able to actually get rid of the Vampiric Embrace, which is not as good with the Warlock version of the build, not as good with a version of the build that doesn't use Mind Blast, let's just say, and more importantly, it costs a talent point, so I can free that up and put it into more effective talents, which I'll end up showing you my talent tree at the end of the video, and also just putting it in my Discord, which I've been doing for all iterations, as we've been building it along the way and yeah, it's pretty damn good I will tell you that guys if you copy this build you will be one of the best on the server That's pretty sick and lastly, but you know not not important So let's just say I was able to get the greater heal and replace the regrowth Which you might not have even known that I had regrowth I've been kind of messing around on the side But I did not have any other heal but regrowth I prefer to have the greater heal because I think that if we're gonna focus more on PvE Then I'd really just rather have one big giant heal for like my world quests my dailies my you know stuff like that rather than a smaller one with a hot which i think would be decent for pvp but in this case i prefer the greater heal so there's that can't be used of course in shadow form but it really isn't that deep we start off with absolutely pivotal hands of fate rolls that will contribute especially the unstable affliction to what is going to be the most dps i have absolutely ever done on this character all right guys this is my first mythic plus on ascension it's a plus three i believe so uh that's pretty sick dire mall west and we're gonna go ahead and fight zuzi and we'll just see how much dps we can pull i do want to say this is going to be a great benchmark because this clip is right before i got all of the amazing rolls that you just saw the clip that you'll see right after this and i'll commentate that is going to be with everything and you're going to notice a pretty massive difference and so for those of you out there trying to make this build work and there are a lot of you right now i mean a lot um i can basically teach you how to do as good of dps as you'll probably be able to do outside of maybe like the top two percent you know maybe there's going to be a small margin of difference for somebody who really really nitpicks the talents right but uh, i can get you all the way up there and so anyway let's just see how the dps turns out on this guy And there you go, and I remember this fondly on uh, that sarcasm because I hated this, right? 25, 66 DPS, I did get a massive 
bit of like it was a blind it was a cc at the end it was like eight seconds i think where i was down and out and i was in first before that so one thing i will say is that unlike maybe a melee build where all of your damage is up front and not over time when you uh, get cc'd and the dots fall off you know if it's at the wrong time let's say not when you just reapply them all that hurts especially when you need to keep up certain debuffs with this build uh like shadows embrace for example you know what i mean like these are things you've got to keep up or for example if you're cc'd and your plague buffs fall off and that is absolutely damning so this is about as bad as it can get and i also don't have the best build here so do keep that in mind 2500 still perfectly fine by the way for what we're doing which is a mythic plus three i will say plus 10 you want about 3k dps but the problem with mythic plus is that really people just want cleave this build doesn't have good cleave so i need to make up for it with good single target in my head that means i need to be for mythic plus basically first place if i can manage it every single time and uh, in raids for the bosses i'd like to be at least top five uh preferably number one right but if i had to say i you know what am i satisfied with i'd have to go with a plus five but yeah mythic three by the way absolutely nothing dire mall west is pretty easy but uh I, I will say this is not hard um so for anybody that might be a little worried about getting in a mythic plus I, I know there's not a lot of information out there too about like what the requirements are so let me just say this for mythics what i would like you to have and this is just my opinion but also the opinion of um other people i've met in game so better players in some regards as well so do keep that in mind i'd say for a regular mythic zero you want about i'd say 2k Maybe for, uh, like I said, a Mythic plus 10, you want 3k. So in my honest opinion, anywhere between a plus 1 and a plus 9, let's say, you can have anywhere between 2 and 3k consistent DPS. Do keep that in mind. Not like you're barely making it, or if you get CC'd, you end up with 900 or 1100 or 1400. 2 to 3k consistent DPS. Um, and I think you'll, you'll be good for the plus 1 all the way up to almost the plus 10. After plus 10, you really need to have like a really, really good build. And they need to be able to cleave, at least from what I'm seeing. So yeah, keep that in mind. Ah oh, shit, here we go again. Ready for action. Okay, that's my first Mythic Plus, actually, period, uh, with Season 8, right? So that's pretty sick. That's a plus 3 DM West, and uh, we did pretty good. We maintained 3k DPS minimum the entire time. We had some bigger ones as well, like 35, 3600-ish throughout the run, so I'm pretty happy with that. I didn't actually know, because I haven't been doing this, that you get just a big old butt-ton of loot, just random crap, including caches, and I also didn't know that you could two-chest it. There's actually a mini-timer here, and if you beat the mini timer you get an extra cash um so i got all this you know what looks like useless stuff maybe some of it will sell more importantly though i got two travelers backpacks for my bank and the caches so let's see let's start with the personal cash we can choose whatever we want I'm going to choose Intellect, Blood Etched Blade, Mythic. Wow, that's actually very, very good. Hit rating plus 13, 37 SP though, which is absolute duty. Like, it's just so bad. But then 15 Intellect. I'll keep it because you never know. But now let's open up our Mythic 3 caches. All right, Intellect. Guiding Staff of Wisdom. 15 Intellect, 33 Spell Power, which is just crap, isn't it? Because, like, my current one gives me 84 right? It's also just better. So I'm just not getting upgrades, man. But it does give hit and haste and crit and stuff. So it's interesting. Five gold though. That's vendor trash. Uh, okay. Next one. Last one. Intellect once again. Shadowy laced hand wraps. Interesting. Item level 72. 18 intellect on this. No spirit, which I do want with this build. No hit rating. Wow. My heroic magister's gloves are actually just better, right? Like it is more SP and more intellect, but that's it. <laughs> that's it. Um, I don't know, like, am I getting that MP5 effectively the way that I do with my spirits? I, I'm, I'm not exactly 100% sure how that's working. Um, but you know what? Isn't it kind of par for the course for this channel for me to go and get nothing? <laughs> like, all of this! Two-chested it, 
and everything and got nothing. All right, let's uh, see if maybe we can do more and get luckier. All right, so we are back in Orgrimmar after that first Mythic Plus, and I do have to say, I'm really confused by the spell power on this uh, Guiding Staff of Wisdom. Also, why is it a Guiding Stave, right? That's that's the plural. It doesn't really matter, I guess, but I have a Staff of Ruins, right? It's already better item level-wise, but the fact, and really in most ways, but the fact of the matter is, 33 spell power? Maybe that's wrong, right? Let's put it on. No, it's not. <laughs> like, look at the difference if I replace it, man. 847 bonus damage versus 1,010. And that's without the intellect. 1,016. I mean, that is awful. That is the literal worst. So I could never use these. So, you know, so much for that. And, like, this gives shadow resistance, man. So I don't want to go the entire video going over talents. I feel like I've been going over talents a lot. So I will say this specific build is in the description below. But the only real difference is that we're going to be doing a spirit version. So we grab talents like meditation, mostly for things like the capstone bonus. My spell crit is increased by 15% of my spirit. We go into things like student of the mind, 15% more spirit, but my spell damage increased by 15% of my spirit and ideally if i had more talent points and more hit in my gear so i could get rid of things like death's grasp i would also be going into the shadow priest tree and maybe going into spirit tap right you take three points and tap you take two more points to improve it and then every time you crit with a shadow spell you get 20 percent of your spirit a spell crit so that's just doubling down on it and it's pretty freaking good otherwise it's pretty much what you would expect from a wrath casting harbinger of pestilence build and as you saw it's doing roughly 3 to 3.5k in the uh, actual dungeons where there is cc and stuff like that i am still obviously heavily punished on any encounter where there is any amount of genuine cc you guys can see on the screen now i was blinded twice that uh really destroyed my dps in this one fight in that dungeon um and so yeah that's obviously pretty crap but you know what it is what it is i think it would happen to anybody it's just especially bad because when your dots fall off and you have to reset it just kind of dips you dramatically in dps and you really can't recover too easily from it i am very happy about the traveler's backpacks all the random loot though is just kind of like a mess oh i got an ogre tan in though that's pretty cool i think i can actually use that for an ogre suit so we'll keep that for dire mall north all right so i can buy Buy two more slots and gold for that one what a rip off and there we go much bigger bank i'll take it so i was doing some mythic plus but i decided i wanted to dip my toes into some light rating right i've done some aq20 i've done molten core i think these were normal versions and so what we're going to do now is heroic anixia and uh, this is going to be my first test if you know can i do this right that's basically what it was and uh yeah turns out i can i want to show you guys the entire fight with the harbinger of pestilence build with the updated version of the build with the unstable affliction that you guys saw that I got at the beginning of the video and you can contrast that I think very nicely with that mythic plus and previous DPS tests as well and I think what you're gonna see might surprise you The loot was really nothing special on this one, sadly, and I didn't win the head. I didn't need the backpack, because mine's already better, but, uh, hey, I'll take first place DPS. Okay, that was a Nixia, and I'm pretty happy with that, because, uh, I think that's the first raid I've done on this character, where I came in first place DPS. Now, it's not the craziest DPS, 3200 DPS, but, um, to these people it would be, right? <laughs> so that feels pretty good. And we got this daily quest done, which is the most important part, Extraordinary Spoils of War 50 
1500 marks for another reroll and we get magister's gloves garbage i have a much better version and yeah just crap right so i'm gonna go ahead and do another reroll i'm still trying to get rid of some of my talented abilities that aren't that good like shadow burn for example which i ended up never using basically i've bit the bullet so far with this build and admitted to myself that my aoe is never going to be good it's always going to be average but my single target is pretty awesome so shadow burn it was only for aoe turns out it wasn't enough aoe to really matter it's not worth the epic slot so got to get rid of that and get that extra talent points maybe a frost build i don't know blizzard cone of cold and we have our hands of fate Disarm is really cool for PvP, but basically I established I'm not really doing much of that anymore. I don't know about this. Maybe the Scorpid Sting? I don't really want to work it into my rotation, to be honest with you. I don't think it's going to be that good. Somebody's going to Curse of Elements, I think. Alright, that's garbage. Evasion? That's really interesting. Rarely see that after level 1. I don't think I want to replace the Master Spell. Although at the same time, no, I'm going to keep it. I'm going to keep it and uh, we're just going to stay with what we've got. I mean, okay, we didn't get anything good from that. I've already got a frost character, just remember it, so I don't even need those two. Let's just see if we get anything from it. One, two, three. Crack humanoids, fairy fire, ravage, garbage. Okay, let me just vendor everything and let's find another raid or mythic plus to do. Okay, so mythic upper black rock spire. Honestly, one of the most fun that you can do. I'm so sad that you can't queue for that. I, I don't know if it's even feasible for them to add and I don't want to always be asking for things because the game is good right and it's just you know let's be real here uh but it would be cool if you could queue for it because damn is it so fun to do um and you get really good loot 3.8 to about 4k dps at the very last boss there i'll take it i think that's a pretty good improvement you know the improvements in dps i think i could be wrong but i think they're going to be smaller smaller increments now uh because i think getting about 3 4k dps is just good a lot of people can't do anything close to to that right um even if we just look at the dps charts right here we had one guy at 4.1 we've got another person who's basically the same as me right here one thing i find fascinating about this person's build though is that harbinger's bile and insect swarm are top two and i think it's because on the last boss i didn't cleave at all i was just going just for the boss and just seeing what my single target was and i got at the end there 3.8k but i had pumped over 4k towards the end and i think that if uh, i had just done things slightly better i could have probably just had a 4k dps run right there and so that's what i think my dps is really at at the moment if i play really well maybe more than 4k but i'm just gonna say for myself let's say 4k but this person who is doing quite the opposite of me in terms of what their abilities uh prioritization is in terms of the damage chart um i mean i'm talking about the harbingers by all the insect swarm and then the wrath versus my wrath insect swarm and wrath of plague i don't even have Harbinger's Bile in the top three, right? Wildly different the way it played out right there. We got another person playing the same build at 3.3k, probably a little higher than that because all the damage petered off at the end. And we got another Holy build. So the top five builds in that upper Black Rock Spire were the same two builds. <laughs> Which in hindsight is horrible and nobody noticed i think i didn't notice I, I had no idea but they're basically the same uh just slightly different which is fine too think about it right it's like it's not everybody with the exact same abilities even though they're using the exact same builds so this holy guy is up here with his hammer of wrath hammer of the righteous heart of the crusader um you know that's going to be using like a sword and shield holy dps build and then we've got number five here it's really the same build he's using hammer of the righteous but it's like built slightly different than the guy that came in first in fact this guy's damage is very very clean you know like everything is contributing very nicely to his overall and this one's a little less clean so he's relying on fewer abilities i think um so there's a maybe more bloat there like the crusader strike right like where, why is that there uh but he's still awesome right he's doing 3.3 that's sick probably more than that and then you know it starts to go down we have a cat build at 2.8 he's probably actually doing about 3k fire build at about 2.3 so you know just plus or minus 200 i'd say plus in most cases here and then the last real dps was a frostbolt build right and these guys can pump 
So, yeah, interesting. But, all right, there we go. That's the quest. Dungeoneer Spoils of War. Let's see what we get. A Blade of the New Moon. I don't want it because there's no spirit, right? And that's the main thing I'm focusing on right now. But, okay, I'll definitely take the rest of the stuff from that, like the Marks of Ascension. I was lucky enough to get the Unstable Affliction, and I'd like to see if I can use my Marks to uh, possibly get the Arcane Power or the Power Infusion. I actually found another person doing this build, and they were very hostile, but because they don't want you knowing their stuff. But I was actually able to use Skada to dissect and reverse engineer the exact way that they played their build, right down to what I think the proper talents would be. And I can't get it perfect, right? But just off this, at least. But they weren't going to give me any information. It wasn't this guy, by the way, or this guy. It was a completely different person that I'm not going to mention. But I, when I reverse engineered it, and I started really looking at them, and I was analyzing their character when they were playing on the bosses, and looking at all of their buffs and everything, I noticed that one of the reasons they were doing so much DPS was simply because they rolled such good abilities. They had both the power infusion from the uh, Discipline Priest tree, which is not only doing what my Icy Veins does, which is 20% increased spell casting speed, but it's reducing the mana cost of all spells. And that's why we're a spirit build, right? It's because the uh, spirit build with some other talents giving us more mana while channeling or casting a spell is going to help us last in a way that you obviously saw I was unable to do in other videos in terms of not running out of mana. So that's a really big deal. And the power infusion is is just making his life easier, that person. And uh, it's much better than Icy Veins, just not in PvP. So that's a really big one that I'll probably never get because I have the Icy Veins, right? Um, I guess if I obviously had the choice, right? Like if Power Infusion comes up and then it specifically allows me to replace Icy Veins, I'll do that. But perhaps the more important one at the moment, at least in terms of raw, you know, DPS output, is the Arcane Power. When activated, your spells and abilities deal 15% more magic damage, of course, then you can eliminate the downside with the power infusion, so that's the combo. That is a massive amount of damage during burst windows that I just don't have. And with dots, it's, I think it's even better, right? Because I think if you pop any kind of trinket or way to increase your spell power and then reapply your dots, that the dot holds it for uh, the entire duration of the dot. And I think if you refresh the dot, like in the case of corruption, it keeps it. Could be wrong. In fact, this type of mechanic changes throughout the expansions, and that's the problem. <laughs> um, so I don't know what it's like on Ascension, actually. Some of you guys are trying to tell me that I shouldn't apply my dots first because they're not getting a 20% damage increase from Haunt, but I tested it on a dummy, and they are. So things are just different, you know? I have no idea what's going on. You just have to test it yourself to figure it out. But yeah, getting that 15% damage increase from Arcane Power just seems pivotal. So that's what I really hope I get. All right, let's do it. Three rerolls. What's it going to be? Innervate. Dude, I thought for a split second if it wasn't rare, but the icon almost got me. I don't quite want the Innervate. It's not actually that bad, but I really don't have that many slots left. You can tell I'm kind of rethinking it, but I really don't think it's that deep. Specifically, again, Arcane Power. I don't want the revive, sadly, so it's going to be harder at this point to actually get something good, I think. Ooh, Wind Fury Weapon. I'll take that. Okay, maybe we'll have a guy with Wind Fury Weapon in the future, right? So, since Anixia went so well, I decided to go into a Heroic Zulgarub. It's an easy raid, but it's a higher difficulty, so Heroic, why not? I jumped into it, and I did pretty damn good. I want to show you guys High Priest Phenoxis. This is an interesting one, and uh, I'll play out the fight for you, and you'll be able to see how much DPS we ended on. Ready for action. So as you guys saw, we are doing a heroic Zulgarub, um, and I saw this one guy, he's the guy that did the most DPS on the last boss, which was uh, Vanoxus, and DXR, 5k DPS, I came top 5 right, 3.4, that's basically, you know, the, the top 5 DPS that we're going to see right now in this whole raid, and he's the same spec as me, nobody else in the top 5 is my spec but this guy. His numbers are about the same, uh, it's what I would expect to see. I think that uh, it's very similar. I have more insect swarm damage. He had more wrath. Really, it's an uptime thing. I fell off towards the end, right? So I think he may have done his rotation slightly better than me. Not enough to account for 1600 DPS, though. So I inspected him because I was very curious. And it turns out the guy has a bunch 
of Ascended Gear. Probably has perfect abilities as well. So he's a really good person to look at in terms of, um, you know, what will Gear do to really make a difference. And I think that that's a huge DPS gap, right? So it's something to look forward to, you know, maybe five item levels more. I mean, most of his gear, look, item level 81, it's so far above par, it's not even funny. Like, it's, it's so far above par, and it's all spirit-based, too. He itemized well. His offhand's not great, but it's, you know, item level 74. It's not that deep, right? Um, but yeah, and he's also going for the wizard oil, which is, like, basically the same as flame tongue, but it gives 1% crit. It's kind of like a mix between the fire orb warlock thing and a flame tongue weapon, so I've heard that you can do that and save a rare slot. I'm not in entirely sold on it as a replacement for what I like, which is the greater spellstone, even though I didn't just have it on. The major spellstone, rather. And by the way, I'm single target. There's basically no cleave damage, so don't worry too much. I'll get back to it after the commentary. I'll just dot everything while I talk, I guess. But, you know, it is what it is. I'm here for the top five DPS on the bosses, as far as I'm concerned. Um, but yeah, it's pretty cool to see, you know, just how that's going to work as we progress with gear and what DPS we'll have. But ultimately, I'm just curious how 2% more periodic damage and 20 spell haste is worse than 25 spell power and 1% crit. As far as I'm concerned, that's all Wizard Oil does, and I'm not really sure why I would need the slot. The only things I'm missing are Power Infusion and Arcane Power. That's basically it. I really don't need anything else, and they're both epics, right? So, I don't know. Seems kind of extra, you know? <laughs> like this super extra min-maxing, you know, to a point where you don't even need to be min-maxing the way that you are. It's just for, like, bonuses that don't really matter. I don't know, I guess we'll find out if I'm wrong on that. But anyway, let's get back to the ZG. Hopefully I can find, like, at least a plus 5. I want to do a Mythic Plus that's just better than the plus 3 I did. I certainly don't think I'm currently capped at plus 3s. I think I could do a plus 10. I'd like to find that. Uh, a lot of people want that 70 item level, but the, the DPS they want is only 3k. And I can easily do more than 3k. A lot more than 3k. Single target, assuming that nothing goes horrible. Um... It's just my cleave damage that sucks, and people really want cleave for Mythic Plus because they want to go super fast and get the two chest, and I totally understand that. That's made me want to make another spec because I'm not really sure how to improve the spec's cleave. It's just not good, you know? Like, where's DXR on cleave, right? Maybe he's like me and he's AFKing the cleave too because it's just not worth it because his name's not on there. But yeah, I think we both get it. <laughs> there we go, boys. I'll take top three 4,300 DPS. Sure, DXR got, you know, 6,300. But you know what? It doesn't matter. There's a massive, massive gear difference, okay? Possibly an ability difference, but probably less so in that regard. He does impress me, though. But what's this other guy? Shadow Clash, Shadow Bolt, and Hellfire. Okay, this is kind of scuffed because there's like 73,000 damage of Hellfire mixed in there. Uh, but hey, I mean, hey, the cleave was part of the boss fight, so I guess you can't really say much. But I'll definitely take that. My only cleave is the haunt damage, and it's not that much. I kind of wish when you haunted with five stacks of uh, the plague stuff that it automatically applied insect swarm. I think it would be completely broken though, single target. <laughs> so that's the problem, man. But wouldn't it be good if on all five targets that haunt affected it at least put the haunt effect on all of those targets? That would be nice. I would like that. Then maybe use, you know, shadow burn for corruption. It's not amazing, but Jesus, I'd take anything at this point for proper for cleave damage. I know you guys are gonna say just dot everything. You can't, dude. Everything dies too fast. You don't get enough ticks and then the DPS ends up being 1400. <laughs> Um, so, you know. Oh my god, we did it. That's another one where if I didn't die at the end because I took boss aggro because the tank died, I would have been over 4k. In fact, regardless of my death, I was first place. Um, that feels so good. <laughs> this is great. Um, you know, I've been talking for years on Ascension about, you know, PvE is easy and that's why I didn't enjoy it as much. This is before Mythic, by the way, so I feel like I had a great excuse. I mean, let's be real. If all you had were Ascension normals and heroics, which it used to be that way at one point, you wouldn't like PvE that much either because there's more of a challenge, but also the DPS is higher and because builds have become, uh, I gotta resurrect. Like, a lot of the times when I'm pulling no DPS, they don't even fucking res me. It just feels good! I'm worthy of a res! Uh, but yeah, it just feels good that there's, like, new stuff being added and just more complexity to it all. I really like it. I'll take first place in 4k DPS on that boss for sure. I definitely will.
Okay, and that is Heroic Hakar, which, you know what, I'll take it. First place DPS at 3,600. Few um, missteps with the rotation there, but one thing I like is that, you know, well, one thing I don't like, first of all, is when Haunt misses. So, at the moment, what I do want to say is that I'm at 8% hit, let's just say. I have 4% on the RE, and I don't know if this version of the build could take it. It couldn't, and that's why I'm missing the Death's Grasp. I'm being very super greedy. So, I'm only at 12%, man. I'm actually still missing quite a bit of hit, which is uh, bad. But, obviously, it's not that deep at the moment. So, what I do like about this, though, is just having to actually think, and very, very quickly. I cast incredibly fast fast and I have pretty short windows on three of my dots eight seconds you know 12 seconds here and there and the corruption if I miss the haunt it ruins everything right and I have to put that back up too and then pay attention to mechanics to the degree that I can which is pretty decent I think I'm, I'm not really dying I died at the end because we only have one tank and uh, I got aggro when the tank was cc'd because I'm doing the most dps I mean I think that's the fairest thing you could ever say you know that's a fair death right unfortunately nothing dropped for me that's good I mean you could argue the hero charm I guess to some varying degree, but I cast so fast that I'm actually going to reduce that spell power to zero very quickly with this build. I mean, this is the worst build if you think about it for it. It's 68 item level and it's, it's a pretty big chunk, but I do have the Eye of Moam and the Mind Tap Talisman, which is not the best, I guess, but I do want to keep my item level up. And I am actually getting mana while channeling with some of my talents, and so the MP5 is not the worst. So I'll take it. You know what? That's a full heroic Zulgarub, and uh, we were basically first place DPS the entire time once that other guy with the ascended gear left. So, hey, that's a great place to be at. But alright guys, let's go ahead and end the video right there. I'm going farther than I normally go with this character because I think I at least owe it to my long-term viewers to just play it to the end game for season 8, get it over with in season 8, and we can always, and we will, go back to just playing all sorts of wacky builds, and they're going to come out with new legendary enchants, we'll try those, and we'll make them be good, you know, and it's going to be a lot of fun. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video with heroic rating, mythic plus, uh, and then some mythic ubers, right? Um, I really enjoyed it, I'm really, really loving the PvE scene right now on Ascension, I think it's a lot of fun, and I think trying to hone the Harbinger of Pestilence build has been a load of fun actually the most fun i've had i mean I, I don't think any of you guys can point to a time where i enjoyed a caster character i have plenty of guys that i played for like seven eight videos that were melee and then maybe some that were hybrid but not a true caster so yeah i really like this if you guys liked it like the video and uh, make sure to subscribe but i'll see you guys in the next video mcdoubles out